Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to be taking a look at the SD Neo Xeon. This is a kit that I've had for a while and a lot of people have been asking me to review for a long time. So finally getting around to building and reviewing this kit for you guys. So let's take a look at this. I've always talked about this kit as being a really nice kit. I obviously haven't built it yet, but uh, I, everything I know about and everything I've seen about this kit, it's a very good kit. One of the better SD kits for sure. And especially a really great option, especially if you don't want to spend the, what is it, $300 or something like that for the HG version of this if you wanted if you like the design but you don't want to spend that much money or you don't have the space the other thing too is the HD version is gigantic so this is a much cheaper much smaller option I think is still pretty good still looks pretty cool uh, and it, it includes the effect part for it which the HGUC version that was a P-Band I add-on set for so very cool all right so anyway really nice box art here on the front as always it looks cool we got the SD Shinanju head poking out there at the top and all that Although honestly a bit surprised that there's no uh, SD Full Armor Unicorn flying around in the background or something like that. So anyway, as always guys, big thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support. You can check out this kit and everything else there on USA Gundam Store. The link is down below. Check that out and save 10% with my coupon code there, Zacharelius10. Here on the side of the box, uh, this, this is number 392 in the SD line, and then here on the other, on the bottom anyway. You just gotta look at the kit there, posed up with all the six arms all spread out like that, and then look at the detail underneath, so you got some nice detail there. Uh, the open hatch gimmick there on the front, where the bazooka can pop out, you've got that, and you've got this able to be attached onto a stand there like that. You've got the effect part, which looks really nice. you also got this effect part for over the... Shinanju's head that plugs into the shield there behind his head there and then inside there you do have the full SD Shinanju kit so you can have that posed out of the Neo Zeong separately if you want to so it's basically all of that uh, and its weapons the beam rifle and the bazooka there as well and then you can just put that all inside the Neo Zeong. I'm guessing there's gonna be some parts forming involved I'm sure but anyway that looks really nice as well so on the other side here is just a look at what the kit is going to look like. I think this is just supposed to be what the kit looks like straight out of the box there without any painting or anything done to it. So even straight out of the box, I mean, it looks pretty good. Uh, and then over here we do have a CG image, it looks like, uh, composite there with the Full Armor Gundam, uh, Full Armor Unicorn Gundam, and also the Banshee Norn, their SD kits, which are also available. So you got those. And list price here, you can see for this kit, 2,000 yen, so not too bad. I mean, it's a little bit high for an SD kit, but as you can see, it's a pretty sizable box and we've got a good amount of stuff in there. Uh, so, we got the full SD Shinanju and then basically a full other kit with the Neo Zeong, a pretty sizable one at that, so not a bad price, I think, for this, considering, again, like the HGUC version costing around $300 or something like that, plus shipping, uh, so yes, expensive. Uh, you are going to have a lot of stickers on here, basically any version of the Shinanju, of course, for all the lining and everything, you're going to have either a bunch of stickers or decals or something, other than the RG, of course, but obviously they're not going to do that type of molding for an SD kit, uh, you can only ask so much. Uh, but everything does look pretty cool. It looks like you got some nice details on there. It looks even slightly, on the armor anyway, uh, slightly more detailed, or at least similarly detailed to the HG kit, actually. So, although I do have that kit, it is packed away, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do a comparison for you guys, but you will, I think, get the idea. Just take a quick look here at the manual as well, and you've got a nice big reference photo there, what the painted kit looks like when it's all done. It looks very nice. On the back side we have the typical uh, comic here, the comic world, so if for anyone interested just here's a look through that. You got the little Delta Plus making a cameo there as well, uh, before he's getting blown up or something there I guess. And so yeah, looks pretty cool. Let's take a look on the inside. You've got just a, another image there like what we saw on the outside of the box, some information here in Japanese. We've got the painting guide down here as well for the Neo Zeong and then for the Shinanju, the painting guide there is separate. So the colors are actually going to be slightly different between the two of them. And then Mobile Suit Explanation, just again, just going over some of the details, pointing out what's what on the kits and all that. It's all in Japanese. As this kit came out before, they started implementing more English in the manuals, but that's okay. It looks like, oh, this is going to fold out very interestingly. Opens up like a big map. <laughs> so here we have the parts list up here. It looks like we are going to be using everything. Uh, looks like we don't have any X's on there, actually. So... That's cool, and then just goes through the construction, we've got uh, step one here, I'm guessing, yeah, it looks like you build up the Shinanju first there on these uh, steps one through 14, building the Shinanju, or actually it goes to 15, 18, and then the weapons covered down there, you build all that up, and then you start on, you have a little stand there for that as well, that's cool, and then you start on the Neo Zeong parts, and then how to build the Shinanju into that, and then we go back to our color pages here, to finish up the construction, so you're just finishing up the construction there of the Neo Zeong. 
and all of that, and then uh, uh, applying the effect parts and just that stuff there. So very cool. All right, let's get a look at the runners. All right, so here's a look at the foil sticker sheet once again. And yeah, it's, it is pretty extensive, but again, for a Shinanju, not that surprising. And for an SD kit, you should also expect a good amount of just, or at least a, a few, you know, color correcting stickers on there as well. So while it's not great news to see this many stickers, it also shouldn't be all that surprising. We got runner PC7 here for some polycap ball joints. We got three of this runner actually. And also PC300 for some more, and then a couple of their polycap parts there all in gray. And we got runner SV1 here for our stand in black, and it looks very simple, but effective enough. Looks, you know, good enough for something like this. It doesn't look bad. All right, the runner A is going to be for the SD Shinanju. So you've got a couple of clear yellow parts up there for the beam saber and beam axe effect parts. And you'll notice for the beam saber, the handle is molded together with the beam effect part, unfortunately. So you will have to mask and paint that handle off. Uh, not the worst thing in the world. You also got the clear part for the mono eye there in yellow as well. You got the white parts for the fuel tanks, uh, a bunch of red parts there for the torso, the head, the shield, and then some black parts over there on the side as well. Runner B then a bunch of just our armor parts for the arms, legs, and backpack in red. We're going to see some gray parts here for some detail parts, the axe handles and the rifle on there. So our D is now getting into the Neo Zeong parts. So you can see some very large parts here in this little bit darker shade of red. For an E1, we got the fuel tanks, a couple of arm parts on there, the part for the front of the body of the Neo Zeong, and then our E2 is a copy of that runner minus the part for the front of the body. For an F1, back to gray again for some bazooka parts and some more of the gray detail parts, including all the fingers and everything for the Neo Zeong, and also runner F2, a copy of this half of the runner over here. And lastly, runner G here, obviously for some of the larger gray parts there for the Neo Zeong, and it looks very cool. That detail does look really nice on this, so looking good. So alright, as you can see, for an SDK there is still a good amount of stuff to build in there, and I can see there's definitely going to be a lot of missing color apps on this. I mean, as it typically goes with SD kits, you can look forward to a lot of masking if you're planning on painting this, but it doesn't look too bad in terms of just the overall mold quality, the details, everything looks good. So I'm going to get this all built up, and then we'll see how it looks. Alright, so here's how it's going to look straight out of the box, and hopefully this thing can make it around a couple times without tipping over, because it's very back heavy. It's kind of tricky to get this to stand up on its own, uh, with just the backpack being so heavy like that, and it being, well, having big feet, it's still just back heavy. But fortunately, the kit does come with a stand, and it looks so much better up on the stand anyway, just because, as you can see, with it being on the ground, you can't really have the legs pose in a really cool way either. They just kind of have to pose just like straight down, so it just doesn't really look good on the ground anyway. But it was a pretty simple build. Honestly, it probably took about as much time to put the stickers on as it did to just actually build the whole thing. So the stickers do take a while, and there are quite a lot of them, but again, with it being a, a Shinanju, you know, most versions of the Shinanju do have a lot of stickers and or decals that you have to use for it anyway. It's just kind of a, a trait of the design, I suppose. But even before we get this loaded up into the mobile armor, we have a ton of different option parts here just for the Shinanju. So let's take a look at these here first. All right, so here, here is the stand and it's very basic. You can't really do a whole lot with it. This attachment point, I guess you could like flip it around this way, but I don't think you're gonna wanna have your Shinanju like flying horizontally. Then we got the beam rifle here, pretty cool. You have a foil sticker there for the camera for that. Uh, otherwise, it just fits down into the hand and that is pretty much it. It does look nice. We do also have the grenade launcher attachment for that, which can plug up onto the bottom of here. And so I'm really glad that that is uh, included. Of course, the handle for that, so you can hold that just by itself. The handle does look kind of dumb on there like that, but I'm really glad that at least the grenade launcher is like included with this. If you really don't want the handle on there, you can just lop it off pretty easily, just cut that off. Uh, or if you do want to have this at, actually as a separate handheld weapon, you can do that as well. Because here we have the shield. Now the shield stickers were probably the most precarious. To get the stickers on here was a little bit tricky and I kind of did my best and it looks alright, but still it's going to be a little bit hard to get those stickers on there. You have your connection piece, which will just plug into the center of the shield like that. And you can plug the grenade launcher here onto the back of the shield, just like other versions of the Shinanju. You can do that here with the SD as well, which is pretty nice. You can plug that into there. Again, you can cut off the handle if you don't need that on there. Then we have our beam axes, which are pretty cool. You have two of these and you have two effect parts for them as well. Now the effect, effect parts are specifically for the left and the right. So you wanna make sure you have the right one because you can see it just plugs, it doesn't actually like fit into there. It just plugs onto the back side of there. So once that's attached, it's gonna look good from one side, from the other side, not quite as good, but anyway, those can both have their effect parts on there, which are nice. And then you have these little connection pieces, which you can plug this into like that. And then we can plug these for storage onto the back of the shield here. Maybe it will help to remove the connection part first. 
So your beam saber handles can store up in there like that in the shield as well. And not too bad looking. It does work pretty well, actually. We do also have the beam saber, but as you'll notice, the beam saber handle is molded together with that. So you'll just want to mask off the effect part and just spray paint that and then you'll have the handle in the correct color not a big deal but at least that's included and i like the curved effect of that it does look pretty good for a good slashing action movement and then we have the bazooka as well which all is also pretty nice so this one as well you just hold it in the hand no stickers or anything for this at all it's just as it is pretty simple but this one as well can be plugged into the back of the shield or onto the rifle as well so you need to just remove that part off the top then you can plug the barrel in farther in there and then we can just plug this onto the beam rifle like that for a really cool attachment. I love that. It even looks good in SD. And then in order to plug it onto the back of the shield, you will have to remove the beam axes. They can't all fit on here together, but you can just plug it onto the back of the shield like with the grenade launcher. And it doesn't really want to stay in there. It's kind of loose. So if you want it here, I would suggest maybe putting some glue on that because it's just kind of heavy. The connection is not very good, so it just kind of tends to fall off a little bit too easily. But a couple of other things I wanted to show you with the beam axis here, you can use that connection piece to plug the two of them together to make the double-ended beam axe like that, which is very awesome. And then the one more thing, you can plug them back onto the shield in the extended form as well. Plug one on and then the other onto the other side just like that and there you go you can have your beam axes with the effect parts extended there and i think i maybe have those backwards but uh, anyway you get the idea you can do that which is pretty awesome so pretty much almost everything that the high grade can do you can do with the sd as well which is pretty amazing then just to real quick take a closer up look at the kit we have a clear yellow piece for the mono eye but then you stick a green sticker over the top of that but it has a kind of system similar to the master grade uh, zaku 2 version 2.0 where when you turn the head the mono eye turns as well it's a very simplified version of that but it does still work when you turn the head the mono eye turns so it's a pretty cool effect for an sd kit uh, the color separation also is pretty nice with the gray piece there for the piping and that that goes around there. You will have to paint the Vulcans there in a different color if you want to have those in gray. Then we've just got one, two, three, four, five, I think stickers around there on the chest and then stickers here, 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 here. Not really anything on the back, but one thing that I don't really like about the back is that here in the center of the backpack, it feels like it should have a set of thruster bells there. It's just got this kind of detail that sort of looks kind of like a thruster bell. But I would definitely just get some like option parts and just add some thruster bells in there to the center of the backpack. It just looks a bit odd as it is like that. But the articulation is going to be pretty basic. Basically, you have a ball joint here for the shoulder. This part here for the arm will move up and down. The arm is just one solid piece attached on a ball joint there. And so you don't have like really a ton of movement there with that either. Same thing for the legs. You just got those attached via a ball joint there on the hips. And the, the whole hip joint will turn side to side, as you can see, like that a little bit. But you can barely get the legs spread out very far at all. So once you get that up in the air, at least you'll be able to maximize that. But the ankles, you can barely move those. So you can't really get them into too wide of a stance, really. Up underneath the feet, you do have some nice detail there. But you also have some hollow space as well. So it's a bit of a mix. Nice detail all around, like the legs, the waist, the arms, all the details. Again, like kind of similar to the high grade. You've got all the same details there. Basically, it's just all scrunched down into this SD form. And you will have to do some painting to get everything in the right colors. Background here on the backpack as well. The main thruster pod here is just on a ball joint. Nothing else moves or anything on that. That's it. It's just attached via a ball joint. And then the fuel tanks as well attached via ball joints here as well. All right, so again, I think it's pretty awesome that just the Shinanju by itself, even before you get it loaded up into the mobile armor, is a pretty awesome kit here. So, I mean, obviously this the Shinanju is available on its own, so if you do like what you see, and maybe you're not so interested in getting the full mobile armor, I would say the SD Shinanju here is a pretty awesome kit as far as SDs go, and I'm not really particularly too big of a fan of SD kits, but I can say it does make for a really cool kit with all the different option parts. Now, that said, I think the regular SD kit does not come with the bazooka, I believe, so that is one thing that you will only get with this kit. But also the articulation of it being an SD kit does limit the posing options a little bit. At least you have a lot of different weapon options. So while you might be able to do a lot of actual different poses, you can at least change up the pose by just changing up the weapons and you have lots of different options there, which is good. All right, but let's get this into the Neo Zeon. Now, first thing you need to do is change out the adapter piece here for the stand. Now you notice I wasn't using this for posing the kit just because I wanted to have a little bit better options as far as like angling the kit and all that. But you change it out for this piece, which is the piece you'll have to use for the Neo Zeon. Now, I think you probably don't 
don't really necessarily need to. This one's just a little bit larger and will give you a little bit more stability, I guess. We have the main bottom piece here, and you can just remove the fuel tanks if you want to have it in the form without the big giant fuel tanks on there. You can just have it like that if you want. Or those just plug into there pretty simply, and they look pretty nice. You have got stickers here, and then obviously you've got seam lines down the middle of those there as well. But they do look pretty good, a sticker here on the back, and you'll obviously need to paint in some of these bits around here. Here is where the Shinanju is just going to sit in there now. The only thing you need to remove to put this into here is the fuel tanks. I was actually expecting to have to maybe remove the legs or something else like that as well. But nope, that's it. So you'll notice there's the peg there in the center. You just gotta tuck the toes in, and then it'll just plug down there onto the peg like that. Then you'll take this part, which has a bunch of stickers on the front of that, and then just plug this onto the front of here. The hands should be kind of hidden in there. And also, one thing I forgot to point out, another sticker is for the hand covers. The hands are just totally molded in gray, but for the back of the hands, you have the sticker that goes on there, which is actually a slightly different color red from the rest of the body, so it's kind of a, like metallic kind of foil sticker red there. It doesn't really match the rest of the Shinenju's body, but just on a side note there. But yeah, we got stickers here, 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 and here for the front of there. And then for the arms, you'll just plug this over the front. You got a polycap connection there in the back and then a little tab here in the front to connect this all over the top of the arms. And here you go. It does look pretty awesome when it's all loaded up in there. And uh, the arms, the arms are gonna be different. The two main arms are different and that the hands have like the four finger, they're like separated into like four fingers and a thumb where the hands that are gonna be on the other arms are just gonna be like the five fingers just orientated like that. We'll come back to those in a minute. And these front arms, the red piece is like a solid piece and you can see the back arms are not solid as the hands when they're just stored or just stored up inside there. And then when they're in use, you'll just move those around to uh, just sticking out here on the other side like that. But so these are just on a ball joint there. So you can kind of move these around and you have a little bit of articulation there and then connected up in there via a ball joint as well. So you have some, some articulation here for the main two arms on the front. Of course, you can rotate the hands there as well, like so. The arms on the back here are plugged on via polycap ball joints and not very securely. They just kind of like sit in there. And so it's not like the best connection. They're just kind of sort of in there. And around here is where you can plug in the shield if you want. You can attach it with the grenade launcher attached onto the shield as well, but I just have the grenade launcher off for the moment. That will just plug into there like that. And the shield on the back of there does look all right as well. You kind of got a lot going on on the underside of the shield there. But what that does also do is give you the place where you're going to plug in this halo option part onto the shield here like this. So that just goes onto there like that. So if you wanted to use that effect part, you need to have the shield attached onto there. So pretty interesting effect. These panels on the front do also open up. You can take that off and then you can stick this back into there like that for an opened effect. And then you can stick the bazooka barrel in here as well for recreating the effect of the bazooka firing on the shoulder like that. So again, pretty cool effect. And then for the main effect here, you'll have to temporarily remove these arms here on the side just to get these out of the way to get this on and this plugs on at the back skirt here and then on the back of the shoulders there's attachment points there and there to so plug it in down here first oh yeah you need to remove the shield first as well also sorry about that all right so get this all plugged on there then we can put the shield back on and these arms back on and this fuel tank back on which just fell off put these arms back on and the halo effect back on there as well and there we go there it is with the effect parts in place and it does look pretty awesome like that i gotta say and yeah it's certainly a lot more manageable than the hguc kit i mean just to have it in this compact form it's still i think a really good representation of the mobile armor uh, even if you're not a big fan of the sd style it still has a pretty cool look to it and again, just the fact that it comes with pretty much everything that you get with the HG kit as well. Well, like the arms in the back are hollow and you have hollow spaces here and there. You have uh, more missing color apps with this version of the kit. You, on the opposite side, you have the addition of the effect parts included in the box, which are nice. You don't have to pay for those as a P Bandai thing. And obviously just generally the price is so much, much lower and it takes up a whole lot less space in your collection. So there's pros and cons certainly to this uh, on both ends, but 
if you wanted to have some form of the Neo Zeong in your collection, I would definitely say this is probably the one you'd want to go for. The Converge figure is also pretty nice, but then that's only if you really wanted to have the Converge figure version of this rather than a kit that you can actually build yourself. So again, it's a pretty awesome kit that's not going to cost you a whole lot. So if you're a fan of this design, if you're a fan of the Shinanju or just kind of Unicorn as a series in general, I'd say definitely check it out. It's worth having. And there's a lot of customized options there. I'm, I'm sure you guys have probably seen some of the custom kits around on the internet. I've seen a bunch of them. People are basically getting this kit and using it just for kit bashing or customizing it in some different ways. And so I've seen a lot of really cool things done with this. That said, not sure I can say that I've seen someone turn this kit into the second Neo Zeong, basically just by painting it white, chopping off the antenna on the head to turn the Shenanju head into the Shenanju Stein head. You'd have to do a little bit of modification onto the front chest of the Shenanju as well. And then like around those open hatches on the big shoulder parts of the Neo Zeong where you had to do a little bit of modification there as well. But it really wouldn't take a whole lot of modification to turn this into the second Neo Zeong. You'd have to do some modifications on the backpack as well, I suppose. But anyway, it could be something that could make for a cool project. And as far as I have seen, I haven't seen anyone do it, but I'm sure probably someone has. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably already have this kit. If you do, what do you think about it? What have you done with yours? And if you have other further questions about the kit, do feel free to ask there down below as well. So thank you guys again, as always, for watching. Thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support as well, of course. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.